Maybe uh, you know, a follow up, something to share with a, a fellow developer who maybe was not able to participate tonight. Check so if you're gonna work. if you're gonna tweet, uh, it's it's hashtag crowded work because crowded was a TV show on NBC that they canceled. <laughs> so it's um, hashtag crowded work. We'd love for you to tweet that. And again, how many people here have tried uh, the the Erica bot onboarding? So again, raise your hand if you did. Did it did it work? If not, Nick's here. You can. You could give your bug reports to Nick. Nice. And if you give your bug reports Nick. to Nick, it actually might help you get a job here, too. So if you have not done that, if you look on the back wall or over there, it's 339-970, was that 3235. So we'd love everyone tonight before you leave, just go and hit that. You can just type hello or hey or whatever. And if you already have your crowded profile, which most of you do, it's going to ask you some missing questions and really kind of help us uh, match the jobs. And also one of the things that came up tonight is number of years of experience. And that's a key part of your profile. If you don't have it in crowded today, we'll let you know that in the text messaging onboarding bot. And we'll ask you for your number of years of experience. So we would love everyone to tweet tonight. If you could do it here, take a picture. Or if not, do it at home. Share some feedback. Let other fellow developers know something you learned. That would be great. So I wanted to talk just for a few minutes um, about you know, our experience as a team. So Joe, Mark, and I, this is actually our third venture-backed company together. We have two exits um, together. And um, you know, we've had the opportunity to review and, and hire um, lots of uh, development talent. And I wanted to share you know, some of what we've learned from a non-technical founder. So what's interesting is when we bring in or when we take a look at a developer, you know, there's of course um, Andrew who's going to do um, a coding challenge review and, and a technical interview. And then after they get through Andrew, they have to meet with Joe, Mark, and I. And it's a very different e experience than what your technical interview will be. And you're going to run into this not only at Crowded, but in many jobs that it may be another person in the team, a project manager. If it's a startup, you're typically going to meet with the co-founders. And if you are working or, or if you're going to apply for a job at a startup with less than, I would say, 25 people, and you don't have an opportunity to meet one of the co-founders, I would probably try to go back in and, and, and meet them or bring it up in, in the interview. I think it's important for you to understand you know, kind of the culture and, and, and where they're coming from. So again, from a non-technical co-founder, I, I haven't written a line of code in 25 years, and the last thing I did was Z80 on a Sega Game Gear, and I don't think many people here are old enough to remember what a Sega Game Gear or any assembler language. So I don't pretend to, to be technical at, at all. So what we look for as non-technical co-founders is we look, for, we look for, for, for culture fit, and that's a really overused term, and no one really knows what that means. But you know, we're a small team, we're a dozen people. As you can see, this is a pretty cramped office space. It's not as terrible when there's only 12 people here uh, during the day. But we need everyone to, to work together and, and fit in as a team. You know, Andrew's development team is three strong right now. We're, we're hiring a four, so it'll be, it'll be four people. And you know, they do daily meetings, and, and, and you know, they're, they're just working together so closely. We need to, we need to think about how are you going to, to fit in in the team. Um, we also look at um, experience in, in, a, in a very different way. So there's, you know, I think some frustration here in, in, in the room about, you know, the number of years of experience that might be required, you know, for a junior developer position, you know, whether it's clear on a job posting or, or not. You know, for us, you know, what's, what's quite interesting is, is, you know, both Nick and, and Al don't have, you know, what you would consider, you know, a, a formal, you know, career path. Um, or you know, uh, education in, in computer science or things like that. They come from a from a different path and had you know very significant and demonstrable project experience. So again, some companies are only going to screen on that and say, all right, you haven't coded in a full time position for three years, or you don't have a CS degree, and I don't want to talk to you. And there are definitely certain companies like that, especially larger companies, may just you know set set a filter. But you know you're going to see. In smaller companies, just you know, a lot more flexibility, and, and we're really looking for you know, we're really looking for the gems. So you know, to me, you know, I don't care if someone went to to you know Carnegie Mellon or MIT. I don't care if they they worked at, at Google. That that doesn't matter to me. What what matters to me as a non-technical, you know, uh, co-founder who's hiring developers is one, you know, how you did on the coding, how you did on the coding challenge, how you did on your technical interview, 
But you know, how are you going to fit in you know, with, with the team? Um, are you willing to, to learn? And it's perfectly fine not to have all of the answers or not to use the same framework or you know, same, um, you know, anything that, that we use. So, and I think that's something very important. I think a lot of people, especially if you have less interview experience, you're more likely to try to have an answer for every question and you feel very uncomfortable not answering, not answering a question or you know, not, not necessarily not being truthful, but, but not saying like, you know what, I don't know that. And that's perfectly fine. So you can say, you know, I haven't used Laravel. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. Okay. So I haven't used Laravel or, or whatever it is. And but you could say, but you know, I've worked in another PHP framework or I have this other experience. So um, I, I think that's perfectly fine. And, and we actually look for that. We see that as a as as a positive. Um, you also should be doing the same amount of diligence on the companies that you interview with that they're doing on you before you show up here at Crowded for an in-person interview or any company. You've already had your profile or your resume screens. Um, we've typically looked at your, your GitHub um, kind of public facing repo. Um, you very often have done a coding challenge. So by the time you show up here, we've actually invested a decent amount of time in that point. I know a lot of times it feels like companies don't care, you never hear back, and that's something we want to fix and kind of close the loop in, in our platform. But there's really a lot of time that's invested by the time you show up. So um, what I think is really important is that when you do have a, an interview call or an in-person meeting, really do your diligence on, on the company. Do your diligence on, on, a, on, on the founders. So today we interviewed for a software developer. He, uh, he's here at the, the meetup today. And um, you already met with Mark and, and Joey. He went through the coding challenge and met with Andrew and our, and our tech team. And I was running out to a meeting. I was like, you know what, let me, let me make sure I, I can meet him. Where is, well, is Jared here? Right? It's you know what I just I just saw him. Yet he had he just headed out. I just saw, he just passed me by in, in the hall. But Jared was here tonight. So what I found fascinating, by that point I told them who I was and I said, look, I don't have any any technical questions for you. I'm not going to pretend to ask you any technical questions. Let me know your questions. So what what I found really fascinating is he asked, he asked me questions about my background and my previous company and he actually looked me up on LinkedIn. It was pretty easy to find and said, so in this company here, you know, how'd you handle this? Or you had a question like, you know, he's working on you know, a solo project in the music space. And he asked me like a marketing question. So I walked out of there and I was like, wow, that was a really insightful, thoughtful person and, and candidate. And I walked out very positive. You know, you're not gonna get hired just you know, based on, on that, but it really helped. So in the, and I, I think I might've spent 10 minutes with him today just because I was kind of in between meetings and he spent more time with, with Joe and Mark so my feedback for the team tomorrow morning, I'm telling you now, is that you know, I, I really thought he was very insightful and seemed diligent and, and, and seemed like he was very well prepared. And that tells me as a non-technical co-founder that he's going to be very respectful of our work environment and of our team and show the same level of, of care that you know, we want to, to show you know, our, our employees. So again, it, it's not just about um, you know, the best schools and, and the best code and, and, and who worked at, at Google. Um, the last thing I wanted to share, because um, you know, Mark, Joe, and I have been doing this for a very long time. Um, you know, we started our, our first startup in, in 1999 um, when the dot com you know blaze was was crazy, and um, you know we had how many people did we have in, in Canada? So we had 40 developers in Canada. Wow, that number hurts. And do you remember like what our server bill was? It was like hundred thousand dollars a month, some like ridiculous um, amount of money. We had all these servers and all these people worrying about the servers. We had 40 developers to do stuff. So the project that we did in 1999, 1999 today, you know, I don't know what, a developer and a half and a designer and Amazon AWS. Yeah. You could probably one laptop. Do, one laptop, right? You could probably, and it would probably be like 10 times faster and, and more scalable than what we tried to do. So that, and, 30, and a lot more than 30 times cheaper. I'm not going to tell you how much money we spent on that team. Um, so I think with that, a lot of things have, have, have changed. And it, it allows um, companies and teams to, to iterate and get to market much faster with much, um, really, much lower hurdles. So I think you know, one of the things that, that also really, really impresses me is we interviewed another candidate. And we're talking about you know, the bot, and we're talking about you know, voice search and some of the interesting things that we're interested in, in applying to recruitment and marketing. And he's just like, let me tell you about this hackathon I just participated in. You know, Amazon and their lecture, lecture project said, all right, build some skills and, and do this. And he was just like, here's what it did. He's like, I didn't win, but it was cool. I actually learned how to do this, and I used their simulator. I don't have a, an Amazon Echo or, or Dot. And it was like awesome. It was a lot of initiative. So I think as a, as a follow-up to the, the comment and the question um, 
I was asked to Andrew about what happens if, you know, I work at a company and all their code is pr private. So the first answer is don't <coughs> obviously try to repurpose or, or publish anything. That's, that's really bad. But what you can do is just do a fun project. And you know, do something that, that you're passionate about. Um, you don't have to you know, try to launch a rocket to the moon or, or something like that. Try like an Amazon Alexa skill for, for voice search. Um, you know, let's say you, know, you have a band um, and you're trying to apply as a front end developer. I don't know, build a website for, for, for your band. Just do like, something interesting. Do some volunteer work. Um, you work with a nonprofit. I don't know, do something for their database if you're interested in, in, uh, in back end work. That's a great way for you, especially if you don't have a ton of experience or if you're just coming out of a, a code, uh, coding academy or, or kind of dev boot camp, that's a great way for us to get really excited about, about, your, about your work. Um, so it's a great time to be a developer in the tri-state area. Um, the, this is, these are very hard to fill positions. I think there is some skill and knowledge gaps um, between what you know, the employers are expecting for different levels of experience and what you know, some of the developers will have. Um, we're seeing um, a huge influx, um, and we're very excited about it, of um, basically fresh programmers who don't have traditional CS experience from college and didn't have typical developer jobs who are going through dev boot camps and working on freelance projects. And we think that's a great way to, to, get, some, to get some skills and really kind of impress yes, em em employers. Please. So again, um, don't be discouraged if you don't have a you know, degree in computer science and um, you didn't spend five years coding. Don't feel discouraged. Work on your own GitHub. Publish um, your, your own projects that you're passionate about. Um, think about participating in hackathons. Go to meetups like this. Um, you, know, you never know where you're going to meet not only um, your next potential hire, but what about co-founders? Right? So it's fascinating to, to, to me the way that meetups have, have grown up around in New York. So in, in 1999, when, when Joe and I started this, um, you know, there's a lot of things. There's people pitching and, and raising capital, but there wasn't an environment like this where I can go and find a technical co-founder or find you know, my, my first you know, technical hire. I mean, the environment is much more, more fluid. So for those of you with, with you know, some, some you know, startup genes, not pants, but in your genes, some startup um, drive and experience is also a wonderful way to see new technologies and, and what you know, kind of you know, cool ideas are happening and, and you know, to join um, you know, early young companies. And again, startups um, are a lot more flexible in sort of different types of um, you know, academic backgrounds and, and other types of um, uh, you know, direct experience. How many people here have gone through a uh, dev boot camp, coding boot camp? Raise your hand. Online, online yeah, online counts. Let, let's let's separate. Raise your hand if you went through an online boot camp. Few people. Okay, how many people went through in person kind of intensive boot camp? <coughs> Not a lot of people. Like no, no. ten percent, ten, ten percent, ten percent of the room. Cert yeah, certification yeah. courses. That that's great. That's that stuff matters. Also, what it does to to I think to a hiring manager is it shows initiative. It shows that you care enough about your own career development to take the time and, and weekends and nights and, and actually going through something and try to better you know, your knowledge whether you're working full time or, or not. Um, any, any questions I, I can answer? You mentioned programming, programming certification courses. Mm -hmm. I presume those are similar to boot camps but already assume that you have more no? no, no. There's certification programs that um, complete newbie, but, and 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 they're given online. So yeah. versus versus all, in, in are person. There, are there also certification programs that do assume you know how the program and just to, if you want to prove it? Oh, there's other levels. There's like a 202, 303. Yeah. So yeah. there's there's more advanced yeah. certification so programs. I, yes, I, yes, I, yes. For for different language. So you might want to learn 